Hey everybody, welcome back to Watches with Dennis, and we're going to continue our Watches and Wonders 2021 discussion. This time we will be focusing on Cartier. Now when I first started to try and learn more about watches and who were the big players, I didn't think Cartier was anything. I thought it was a fashion brand. I knew they made jewelry. I didn't realize that they were very big into horology and actually were responsible for a great deal of innovation when it came to watches. So they got on my radar pretty quickly, and they did have a number of reveals at Watches and Wonders. Now, I'm not going to touch on all of them, but there are a few items that came up that I think are worth discussing. And I'd like to start with one of the Gerald Genta designs. Uh, Gerald Genta, famed designer of the Nautilus for Patek Philippe and the Royal Oak for Audemars Piguet. He also designed, at least the modern interpretation of the Pasha de Cartier for Cartier. And they revealed at Watches and Wonders a 41 millimeter chronograph version. Now, I don't know uh, about what the market is like for a uh, Pasha de Cartier, because this is sort of what I guess I would call the elegant chronograph market. And I don't know if there is an elegant chronograph market. Chronographs are usually associated with sports like racing or maybe a profession that wants to time things. So well, I don't know. I, I've never, I've seen the Pashas before and I think they're interesting. Obviously, Cartier is mostly associated with rectangular watches. And so it being a round watch sort of stands out just in their lineup in general. Uh, I guess they more recently had revealed a time only version of the Pasha, but I didn't really follow it. And here we are with a, with a chronograph version. I guess if you want one that makes a statement, yeah, this is a watch that sort of screams for attention due to its elegant look. I think it looks overly bulky. Uh, it's not something that really appeals to me. It looks okay. It's just not my sort of thing. But anyway, it was one of their it was one of their reveals, and I believe the stainless version is expected to be just under ten thousand dollars. I believe I saw nine thousand four hundred fifty, and then that ranges up all the way into I believe over twenty thousand dollars for the gold version. So obviously, it's at the higher end price wise compared to a lot of watches, or what we might consider as it's sort of at the normal end, I guess, for Cartier. I don't know compared to some of the tanks and Santos and such. This this runs high even for that. So it's uh it's not an inexpensive watch, but if you're looking for an elegant chronograph, uh, Cartier is trying to have you covered. So. So that was one of the watches that I thought was sort of noteworthy that came up during Watches and Wonders. The next Watches and Wonders reveal that I want to discuss that Cartier did was the, and forgive me, I don't speak French, but I believe it's pronounced Cloche, uh, Cloche de Cartier. And I hate it. I hate it, but it's worth talking about. So one thing that I, I learned when I was researching Cartier was that they do take risks. So obviously the, their crash is a, is a famous watch that looks like it was in an automobile accident. And they've been willing to do really avant-garde designs. The problem for me is generally avant-garde is code for I'll hate it because it's just too out there for me to ever want to wear. But this may appeal to some people and it definitely is unique. So the cloche de Cartier is, and cloche, I believe, is French for bell. And as you can see from the image, it's definitely a bell-inspired shape. It's asymmetrical if you, when you look at it straight on. When you look at it as it would be mounted on the wrist, you're probably going to think, well, this looks like the letter D. It's bulging out towards the right. This isn't, it's not symmetrical. I, why would I wear this? But if you orient it so that the crown is at the top, of, of your of your field of vision now all of a sudden you have balance it is it is a symmetrical design just not how it fixes to the wrist you can tell that the finishing is really well done this is not a sports watch style this is in their the privé collection i believe and the the, the medals this is coming in are gold platinum and rose gold so i'm sure that all the prices are going to be five figures for for this watch the thing that bothers me isn't that, I mean, it looks nice. I don't think I could ever get past that the 12 o'clock position is when you're wearing the watch at the three o'clock. And I, I'm, I, I just don't, I don't think I can do it. I, I've been okay with like Vacheron Constantine has had, I know they have a, a watch. I'm sure others do as well, where it's a little askew. So like if you're holding a steering wheel, the 12 o'clock would be straight up for you. And I see where this gets at that. 
you could wear this watch and say you're typing on a keyboard and you look straight down and assuming that you're in perfect ergonomic alignment, that 12 is going to be straight ahead. I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be oriented properly. You won't have to twist your wrist to look at it. So it definitely has a market that it thinks it's meeting, but just it's so, or I mean, obviously we've moved an entire three clock positions to shift all of this around on the dial. And I don't think most people are going to get behind that. I don't know. It's definitely a conversation starter though. So if you're, if you're interested in Cartier because you want, or you're, you're just interested in watches and your desire is you want someone to ask you about your watch, they'll ask. I mean, people who don't know anything about watches will see this and ask what, what is this thing? And then you can explain why it's a bell. I just don't think that this uh, this is for me in any particular way, but it is unique. Now, the last thing I want to go through are the tank reveals that Cartier did. Now, the tank is their most iconic watch, and they have a lot of different variations of it. Generally, when we talk about tanks, Cartier mixes them up. They have different models. They have different lines of tanks, but usually there are some, there are some general rules that are always in play. So rectangular design, Roman numerals on the dial, and then just where they're positioned, the shape of that rectangle. That's usually where we see the variants. So in this case, uh, I want to start with the tank Louis Cartier. They've got a couple of versions. They've got a blue one and a red one, or that's probably maroon. I, I, that's a red. It's a red. So all right, we got a blue one and we got a red one. A precious metals, I believe both of these are, I think, going to be listed around $14,000. Uh, I like the dial a whole lot. I like the gray. The Roman numerals aren't as pronounced on these as I typically associate with a tank. And that's actually, I've looked at tanks before, and the thing that always has pushed me away is they look so formal because of the Roman numerals. And the Roman numerals usually take up a tremendous amount of that. It looks good. It's just, how often would I wear it? Do, as expensive as it is, is that a good is that a good purchase for me? That's generally been what I've asked. Obviously, this is way above what a normal tank would run price-wise, but you've got a different look. The Roman numerals aren't as pronounced. I think it looks more modern. And so because of that, I just think it's really attractive. The dial finishing looks great. It's still following. Anyone who looks at this is going to think it's a tank. So it's not, it's definitely not lost sight that it's a tank Louis Cartier. So I think it's pretty attractive. But I think what's more interesting than that is what Cartier has done on the lower end of the price spectrum in regards to the tanks. So we have... I get, it's all kind of grouped up under one thing, the tank must. But we, I think we've got two different things to talk about with the tank must. The first is they've introduced three monochrome tank musts. And for those not familiar, there was the must de, de Cartier back, I think it was in the 70s, maybe it was in the 80s. And uh, it was there, it was a lower cost. So it was like a, almost like a sub-branding. It was a lower cost option for people that were interested in getting into a Cartier watch. It, they were quartz powered. They were simpler. It was more affordable, but it was a Cartier. So that was a, that was a thing. And so these monochromes are very much a throwback to that. They're even simpler looking now. I mean, there was a, a bit, not a lot, but there was a bit of text on those old must day Cartiers, but they, they would, they didn't have the usual dial design with all the Roman numerals here. All it says is Cartier and Swiss made, and that's it. There are no markers at all. It's a two hand watch. And so it's in a way, I almost wondered if Cartier was doing this color variant thing because uh, Jager Le Coultre, uh, or JLC has been releasing a lot of reversals lately that are coming with a variety of dial colors. And I've just wondered if Cartier thinks maybe they need to mix things up more than just doing white all the time. But this this does pull off of their history. It's I'm I, and JLC isn't exactly a huge selling watch brand, so I'm I'm guessing I'm wrong on that, and that this was really just something that they decided to do on their own. But obviously, it because it's still quartz as it was in the past. This is a lot more approachable on the price point to get into. These the monochrome tank musts, I believe, are going to retail at twenty seven thirty, which for a Cartier is cheap. Uh, I mean, there are, there have been, if you wanted a tank and you were looking for inexpensive, I believe the tank solo was really, if we're not talking used, because Cartiers do tend to take a pretty big hit on the secondary market. But if you were looking to buy new, the tank solo was sort of the, the affordable tank. 
Uh, and then the other variants, especially once you had the mechanical movements added in, started to get much higher in price. So this, I think, will appeal to a lot of people that are looking for something a little more fun than, you know, sort of staid Cartier with their Roman numerals. Uh, the price point is more approachable than most Cartier watches are. It's not like how it was. I think in the 80s, the must day Cartiers were like 500 bucks for these monochromes. So we, we ain't that cheap anymore. But obviously, it's still, it is sub $3,000 for a luxury brand. So it's very price competitive if you're interested in this sort of watch style. And it is quite a bit different than most uh, most other watch brands. I mean, most other watch brands do not do rectangle watches at all. So Obviously, at this sub three thousand dollar price tier, it sort of stands alone in a lot of ways. I think that this one will win a lot of people over. I think it, it satisfies a, a demand that hasn't been met in a long time. But that's not the only tank that came in at the lower price point. There is, I think, the most exciting tank must, which is the work that they are doing in the realm of solar. So, if we take a look at at this variant, it looks like. A normal tank to me. It's we've got the white dial, we've got the Roman numerals, we've got the two hands. Yeah, you know, it looks a lot like a Louis Cartier tank. But what they've done is they've perforated the space of where the Roman numerals are, and behind that is a photovoltaic dial. And so when it's solar powered, so when the light hits it, the watch generates electricity, and then. It charges the battery, and Cartier is indicating, I believe, a 16-year life expectancy on that battery before it needs servicing or replacement. They've spent years working on this. Now, solar technology for watches dates back to the mid-70s with Citizen, but the trick for them, the challenge that they were trying to overcome was, how do we make a solar-powered tank that looks like any other tank? And when I look at the photos of this, I cannot tell that this watch is any different than a regular quartz or a mechanical. It looks just exactly like a tank. But because it's got a rechargeable battery, I think it's way more attractive being solar powered than a traditional quartz watches. Granted, my biggest issue with quartz watches is I don't like to have to deal with the battery every two to three years, especially when so many mechanical watches at this point have a service interval of five to 10 years. And that's just on paper. You may get further than that before you actually have to send it to a watchman. Granted, changing a battery out is easier and cheaper than getting a mechanical watch service, but I just don't like dealing with it. So I've always been really attracted to the rechargeable ones because they just, they last longer before you have to deal with that. It's nice to know that, you know, if it runs down, it runs down and you can just put it back out in the sun and it's going to come back into play. And in regards to this tank must, what's really exciting about it is on these, it's got a, it's got a faux leather strap and that variant, I believe, is $2,000. $480. So for Cartier, this is real cheap. And in fact, I think the whole range on the solar is like $2480 to about $2600, $2610, depending on a few options. Obviously, the tank lineup is, is a broad, is really broad when you consider all of them, including like the large ones that are mechanical, the smaller ones, the ones that are quartz, and now with the solar power and the monochrome and all that, it gets a little confusing. Anyway, I just, I, it's like solar's not new yet. It, doing it like this, actually pulling it off so you can't tell. You can't see the solar plating. It doesn't look like some eco watch. It looks like a regular Cartier. That's pretty impressive. And that it's all done to actually reduce the, the cost. It's on the low end watch that makes it so much more approachable. I, I just, I think it's a big winner. I think pretty much all of their tank announcements that Cartier has done at Watches and Winners are winners. I don't dislike any of them. Uh, what are your all thoughts on Cartier and what they've revealed at Watches and Wonders for 2021? Go ahead and comment below. And if you want to find out when I'm going to release more videos, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel and then you'll get notified. And other than that, I'll talk to you all next time. Take care, everybody.